If you're interested in what I look like in real life and want to learn more about me, then follow my Instagram page at Joe the Insomniac. Hello everyone. Thank you for watching. Sorry I've not been as much active recently this week. I've just got over my cold and feel a lot better now and my voice has returned to normal. I really enjoyed some of the stories on this video. I wish I had more space around me where I could go camping but I don't really live in the area for it. But I'd love to give it a go. I'll be giving a couple of more updates in the next few videos too so stay on the lookout for them. I hope you're all doing great and enjoy this video. I'm an avid hunter and love to go hiking, so the outdoors is nothing new to me. For as long as I can remember, I've been exploring. I love all the different things you can find outside. I like the smells of the plants, the sounds of the creatures, the nightfall and how beautiful the stars are outside. I really think I've learned a lot about myself through camping and really improved on lots of different aspects of my life. Now, there was one night about three years ago, I went out camping on my own. I wanted to work on some of my primitive hunting skills and just get away from the stress of life. I've been working so hard and felt trapped for a while, so finally getting out was a great thing to me. And I was having a great day. I caught some small animals and was cooking them on my fire. I'd done some reading and wrote in my notes. Something else that helps clear my mind. Now I looked towards my fire and realised that it's starting to go out a bit. So I put some firewood on and decided to trek out and try and get some more wood before nightfall. I know there's going to be a couple of potentially dangerous animals but I'm not scared because I have my gun and I've seen none in the area. So I begin trekking out when something catches my attention not too far in. There seems to be a hunter's cabin up ahead. I think that's odd because I've never really seen anything like it before. I call out and say, hey, is anyone out there half expecting someone to be like, yeah, and have a good conversation with me? But I'm wrong. I'm only met by my own echoes. I have my gun holstered so I don't feel too scared and I slowly make my way up there. As I'm going up there, I can hear a voice now, very faintly, almost like a whisper. I just assume it sounds more distant because I'm further away. I eventually get there and am disappointed to discover that it's been abandoned, and I mean for a long time. It looks like this place hasn't been used since the 1950s at least. I look in there, and there's not much. An old banjo, decaying massively, unplayable. Small pictures that you can't see into, and some mouldy cups. I decide to leave. Luckily I find some firewood just close to it. I'm glad I got firewood and can go back to my camp. I don't realise how dark it's gotten outside. As I'm returning, I start to hear a sound. I think, oh, that's weird, my phone's playing music. I then glance down and realise that my phone's still off. I've kept it this way to conserve its battery. So I stop for a moment. I then realise what I can hear is almost like a stringed instrument. It sounds like it's coming from behind me. I then hold my breath to be dead silent. And what I hear, 
I still have no explanation for to this day and shakes me to my core even thinking about I can hear the sound of a banjo being played from the cabin I'm so scared that I don't even bother gathering up my things I simply run out of there back to my car and have this horrible feeling that I'm being followed the whole way back home I to this day will never go camping in that part of the woods again it's the most scary thing I have ever experienced in my life and I never want to feel again I had a bizarre experience while I was camping on Padaido Key State Park Beach it's a small stretch of beach with a lagoon on one side and the Gulf of Mexico upon the other I was setting up closer to the Gulf side, enjoying the stars, just relaxing in my tent at night. This is towards the end of a solo cross country trip I was on. I had camped all over the country over the previous 35 days and had never experienced anything too scary happening to me. But while I'm laying there, almost simultaneously, the wind goes completely dead on the ocean. No crashing waves, no sound whatsoever. I never truly understood the term deafening silence until that moment. For some reason, my body's response was complete and utter fear. I don't know why, but it's the most scared I've been along the entire trip. I was waiting for something horrible to happen. I had no idea what, but my mind was telling me that something bad's about to happen. But less than a minute later, all the noise returned. Definitely the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. One afternoon, I was completing this 14 kilometer five hour hike on the edge of town. It's an unkept track at an even ground, overgrown and in many places you rely on coloured markers nailed into trees because the track's covered in grass and it's not the easiest hike. And it's into some pretty unforgiving terrain. We're all wearing hiking shoes long pants and long sleeve shirts to minimise the risk of snake bites etc. We're the only people on the track that day that we saw. It's late afternoon and we're about two kilometres from the remote trailhead. We're coming up onto this ridge and see someone heading for us. He's wearing weird clothes that are very tattered. He approaches us on the track with wild hair and says hello, but doesn't ask for a reply, simply looking straight ahead, continuing wandering the track. He has no bag or clothing other than some tattered shorts. By the time we get back to the car, it's dark. We hung around for a bit, packing up the car and don't see him again. What's more weird is there's no other cars here. The country is very unforgiving. There's no easy way you can loop back to civilization. All he has is one hike stick. I've never seen anything like it to this day and I can only assume he's a crazy person out there, living off the wilderness. I had a relative that would seek out ghost towns and I went with him on a few of his excursions. Most of the time, you would find one that is relatively well known, things were overgrown etc. But there would always be signs of squatters slash campers and hunters or vandalism. One time, 
he found out about a very small town that was abandoned in the 20s. After a ton of research, he loaded up supplies and planned to hike there to see if he could find it. After several unsuccessful attempted solo hikes, he brought me along. The hike starts out at an old abandoned railroad junction that itself was 5 to 10 miles off the road. We followed a rail line for about 5 minutes that kept diminishing as we went. Eventually we get to a point where there was no longer any signs of the railroad line and we keep going. He's an experienced hiker and he had a plan where he wanted to go this time. After about 15 or so miles we found it. The town itself was very small. I think there's about 5 houses and a really small general store. One of the houses is in really decent condition. A couple of them have abandoned really quick. Furniture and pictures are left behind, clothes and other belongings packed but not taken. Almost surreal. We later found out it was dated 1922. The store had some product left on the shelves, but this was not like a store in the traditional sense. It's better described as a trading post. There's a few advertiser signs and a few boxes of soap flakes and hand items that we can't make out. I guess the story was that the town existed because it was on a rail line. There was a grain storage facility that was originally located a few miles away from the rail line. My uncle speculated that people in town either owned or ran the grain facility. The grain facility burnt down to the ground and was diverted away with the rail line, thus the town died. Or it could have been that the rail line diverted and then the grain facility burned down later. Like I said, I've been to a few ghost towns before. This was unlike anything I'd ever seen there. The people that lived there were relatively well off. It doesn't appear to be a farming community. Everything looks frozen in time. There's no roads nearby. The closest paved road's probably 30 miles away, and it looks like no one's ever seen this before but us. When I was a kid in the mid 90s, my friends and I were hiking around in the woods behind our house on way to home a timber property and found an abandoned farmhouse. The weird thing was that the house had been left so abruptly. There was still an open mail, a magazine sitting on the coffee table, all dated back to the same date in the 1950s. Sheets and blankets still on beds. Clothes still in drawers, pantry full of canned and jarred food. Half of it exploded or leaked. Dishes in the sink even. Unburnt candles sitting out waiting to be used. A fridge outside full of food that had been turned to muck and dust. After years of exploring, we never come across anything like this. Even the chicken coop had dozens of skeletons in it. There's even pig skeletons left in the pen. A tractor was parked in the garage and was in great shape for its age. It didn't occur to me as a kid at the time, but aside from the house having been left so suddenly, it was remarkable that the place had been undisturbed. There was no vandalism, signs of entry as far as I could tell. We were the first people to step foot in there for 40 years. Not really camping, but as kids, we lived in a new neighborhood. It was next to about 40 acres of woods and farmland. 
There were several abandoned houses and barns, equipment and random junk. It was great to grow up there, as we spent nearly every day exploring the area. But, there was one house off the main road, about 200 yards into the woods. It looked abandoned, but a woman lived there. We found out the hard way by trying to get into the house one day. She came out screaming at us. She was scary as hell looking, wearing a dirty dress, gross hair, looking like she's never had a shower. Needless to say, we stayed away from her most of the time. We also never told our parents because we knew they'd never let us play back there again. We did go back though some time, naming her Crazy Mary. We'd spy on her, and dare each other to get as close as possible. Even then, never get him closer than a hundred feet from her home. About twelve years later, I am home from college and my mum tells me that they took this woman to a mental place. Apparently she lived there the whole time with her dead mum and dad popped up in chairs in the living room. The figures had been dead there for 15 years, dying of natural causes and being propped up by Mary. That means that they were probably freshly dead when we got chased away all them years ago. One of the most surreal things I experienced was while camping. It happened about two years ago. I was out collecting firewood. I remembered I forgot something and have to go back to my tent. The second I step out again, it's like the world stopped. There's no sound at all. No birds, no wind through the trees, no bugs or cars in the distance. Nothing. I was the only thing making sound, as though someone pressed mute on a volume dial. Inside my tent's fine, just not outside. After being outside for 10 minutes or so, it's like an explosion of sound happened. Suddenly birds are chirping, the wind is blowing through the trees and I can hear everything again. Truly an unreal experience. My family used to camp in Angolian Park in Ontario when I was a kid. We used to do a lot of the day hikes with our dog. The dog was a crazy runner and run up and down the trail, back and forth between my parents and my brother and me. This one trail ended at a lookout. My brother and I stopped to take in the view and my dog arrived seconds later running at full speed. He attempted to apply the brakes, but he had so much momentum carrying him that he goes right over the edge. We freak out, our dogs just went over a cliff, and it's a good 60 foot drop. I venture over to the edge to look, and my dog somehow landed on one ledge that sat about 10 feet down. Now what? At any moment, my dog will fall the rest of the way down. It's a sheer drop with no way back up. Then out of the blue, from the trail behind, a hiker appears with full climbing gear. Now I've never seen anything like it before. The guy goes down, saves my dog, and packs up and leaves. He didn't even stick around to say his name. To all intent and purposes, he returned to the trowel and vanished. One of my friends went on a solo fly fishing slash camping trip for a weekend. He's in the middle of a creek fly fishing and kept on hearing this weird garbling sound coming up from the creek. 
so eventually he decided to check it out when he took a break for lunch. It turned out to be a homeless guy that tried to commit suicide by shooting himself. My friend hauled back to call 911 and had to hike back in to show the cops and medics where the guy was, but he was never found. My buddy was so freaked out that he just laid there for hours not knowing what to do. I was camping at Yellowstone slash Grand Tents a few years ago. We set up a camper at an actual site and decided to do some two day long backpack trips in some of the longer trails. The second one was the Cascade Canyon. Actually beautiful. So we get about 10 minutes into the 22 mile loop and decide to set up our tent here since it was getting dark. We cook some food and chill for a bit before heading back to bed. It gets to around 2am and we're suddenly all awoken by some sound outside. My mind immediately goes to bears. Then it starts talking. I'll never forget it. I think there's three or four in a tent. Let's just go out, someone said. None of us can sleep the rest of the night. At the crack of dawn, we hightail it out of there. Hike 12-ish miles into about three hours and get to a ranger station, reports what happened. They said they had received a similar call the night before. They sent a ranger down there I never found out what was going on, didn't hear anyone getting hurt, but then again, I didn't want to look into it.